its energumen, opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mile novices. Energumen by a romping 10, 12 legs. So hello and welcome back to episode number 12 of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. Roland, after some major technical difficulties, we're back and we're going to look at the Dublin Racing Festival, which we were both there, and we are going to give our week 12 selections. And Rona Groom, it's been an absolutely fantastic 28 days for the channel, a 403% increase in our subscriber count. So if, again, if you didn't subscribe, please do so. Hit that red button below and, uh, yeah, join the pack. Mr. Groom, what a fantastic weekend of racing. There's been lots spoken about, lots of different previews since. We're here to give our say here now. Did you enjoy it? Very much so, yeah. Very much so. The racing was top quality. Uh, as usual, a, a lot of races for Sheltonham have taken a completely different look now in the Antipost books. Uh, so look forward to discussing it with you. We obviously had a bit to say about we we're both there at episode on Saturday. Uh, not the best experience. I'm sure a lot of people watching were there as well and would agree with that. But uh, I guess that's kind of a teething thing for Leopardstown and general race courses coming back. But uh, all in all, the racing on track was top class. Yeah. So looking forward to dissecting it here now with yourself. Absolutely. We'll dissect it, as we said. We're going to start with the Nathaniel Lacey. But just look at a thank you to everyone as well who, who did come up and say hello. Uh, there was plenty of action in in, in the tent. Uh, lots of familiar faces. Good to have the whole community back. And uh, watchers, or I suppose viewers of the show and loyal listeners from Limerick, Galway, London, uh, Dublin. Shout out to, to Kieran as well, who came all, all the way over from London and came up and said hello to us. So, um, yeah, and roll on Cheltenham. Just four weeks to go now, Mr. Groom. But we're here to preview. So, the Nathaniel Lacey, I'm actually watching a replay as we speak of Manila Cocooner jumping the last. Now, this was, uh, I know we typically do the overrated and underrated performance, but for me, this was this was actually my favourite performance. Like, apart from the likes of Fasil Vega, I mean, the race had everything. Fasil Vega on the steel, he was an absolute airplane. But this horse in the Nathaniel Lacey, to me, might not be getting the credit he deserved. Uh, it was a great ride by Danny Mullins, but I thought he was, I thought he was, Pretty good now. Thought it looked like a fair weapon. Yeah, you, you might have a case because he's obviously Nick. Kind of the the commentary after the race was he, he nicked it from the front, um, and that and horses like that often can can be underrated. I thought he jumped really well, Manella Cocoon, or his jump at the last was, uh, you know, sealed the race. He just bunny hopped it so economical, and 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 he was away and gone. So um, yeah, you could have. A, he took a big jump up. Um, I think they're going to keep him to two five, maybe the uh, Valley Moore now. He'd be interesting there. The horse for me to take out of the race was Manila Crooner. Uh, sounds a lot like obviously the the winner, but I thought he did very well to finish where he did. He stayed on really well up the straight. Um, and if the race was slowly run, which I think it was, the times kind of backed that up. He's done very well to come through for second. I think he'd be a lovely type now for the Albert Bartlett. Um. A lot of other people seem to have that opinion early this week. Uh, and we're coming on here now, speaking on Wednesday morning. And the price has crashed a little bit, but I think there's a solid case to be made for him. He's took a big jump up from his previous two runs into grade one company. And I think the new course, Cheltenham especially, uh, the big long kind of straight there will suit him very well. So he was the one to take out for me. So uh, slight difference of opinion there, but I, I do. The winner did it nicely as well. I wouldn't crab you. For liking him and maybe Valley Moore is a, a, re, a realistic option for him. He's a real galloper now, and I, I wouldn't like to be, I wouldn't like to be letting him have it all his own way in front in in, in the Valley Moore. Coming back and trip, Willie Mullins um, did say, I think he, he passed a comment afterwards that you know you wouldn't want to go up and trip with the horse. So I know he was getting quotes for the Albert Bartlett, but for me, he he just screamed, you know, drop him back and trip and and let him use his jump and. Uh, and he, as I said, he wouldn't want to be getting his own way in front, especially with Danny Mullins up if he retains the ride at uh, the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, disappointed Eric Bloodaxe. He disappointed me. I suppose uh, early in the race, he looked Manella Cocooner in the eye. And I don't know, his jumping wasn't up to scratch, but I'd say his, his heart was broken uh, trying to take him on up in front. Uh, but yeah, look, that was, I suppose, 
apart from Fasile Vega, he was my perf- favourite performance of the weekend. And I think he's quite interesting for the Ballymore. Spring Juvenile Hurdle, Ronan Groom. Let's move it along quickly. <coughs> um, I'm still not convinced with this Vauban. Yeah, well, look, he's only you've only seen him twice, I guess, so there's not much evidence to go on, but he was good. Uh, obviously, he's he's picked up well off a slowish kind of pace there coming into straight, and he's Phil Dors had no answer to him when he went by. Uh, look, looking at Paul Townend all the way around, he was trying to settle him. He's still green, this Vauban, he's, he's still learning on the job, but I thought it was impressive the way he he picked up and, and went away from them, and that's just red hot form now with himself and Pipe Piper. Um, really, really, really good form that 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 race on New Year's Eve. Mm. Uh, Phil Dor, look, you could make the case that a stronger pace, more stamina test at Cheltenham would suit him and bring him back into proceedings. I wouldn't give up on him. There's a couple in behind that would be interesting for the Boodles. Um, going forward as well, I thought the tight turns ran well for Gordon, and maybe that's one that you could notebook for the uh for the Boodles. But Vauban, yeah, look. He did it well. I, he, there's more improvement to come from him, and it's probably between himself and Pipe Piper now for the triumph. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. You you did say the slow pace early. It, it did it did strike me. That's what it appeared to be. I mean, turning in, you mentioned a couple in behind, but there was five five or six in with chances as they turned in. So I don't think they went it went a breakneck gallop. Uh, and in the triumph, I, I certainly wouldn't give up on Phil Dor whatsoever. And if you look when they jumped the last, he's a cleaner jumper. Um, than Vauban. I just don't think he has the same turn of foot. Uh, it was interesting with Vauban, his jumping wasn't perfect at Punchestown on his debut uh, and Paul Townend, you typically see Paul lining up prominent in against the rail um, on a fancy, on a fancied one like that but it was it was noticeable he, he gave him I suppose he, he gave him a good sighter at his hurdles he was wide the whole way around and um, obviously, you know, coming from his, his background in, in, in France, you know a sharp turn of foot I think that's what won the day in the end. And Phil Dorr, if you look at it, he was staying on again at the line. So a stronger pace in to try and wouldn't give up on him whatsoever. And he could be a bit of each way value at this point at, at six or seven to one. Uh, the Arkel, the Irish Arkel, Rona Groom, we'd um, differences of, of interest, I suppose, coming in, especially when it comes to uh, the road to Cheltenham. I actually haven't put the selections up uh, to date. They are down below. So you'll be able to see our interest in the Arkel at Cheltenham. I'm obviously a Blue Lord fan. You're Riviera to tell. I thought she was too big when we when we discussed it on the podcast last Thursday. In price, she was backed into. Was she? Was she? Did she go off favorite in the end, Ronan? This is two to one, fifteen to eight, or something like that. Blue Lord was just about favorite, if I can recall correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I'll. <laughs> you're going to make the case for Blue Lord, and I'm going to make the case for Riviera to tell. So uh, <laughs> there is a bit of bias, I guess, with the prices that were on it, but like. Uh, it's a it's a good kind of uh, debate to have, I guess. Two sides. Look, I thought it was a really good race. Saint Sam uh, led them at a nice pace. Ran a big race himself, Saint Sam, because he made a couple of mistakes early, uh, but still travelled strongly in front and 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 set it up for a really good time again. Riviere de Tell came there to take it up from Saint Sam, coming into straight, and I think Blue Lord travelled better, but she was she was still picking up really well for Jack Kennedy. The mistake at the last is obviously really significant. Uh, she's kind of just dipped her head there and it stopped all her momentum. So much so that Blue Lord has, has gone right past her and and, and Paul Townend's took that opportunity to cross to the rail. Um, now, Riviere's has picked up really well again and fought all the way to the line. And I think it's significant because there must have been two and a half lengths between them after the last and she's picked up again and she's forced the steward's hand to look at the, the move from Townend. She's got close enough for them to to, to warrant a, a, a steward's inquiry. So I thought that was a big run from Rivier to tell, given the mistake at the last. I think she marginally, without the mistake, well, like, jumping is the name of the game, I guess, but if she doesn't make the mistake at the last, I think she probably wins. Uh, I think the two miles of Cheltenham on a, on a stamina more course brings her stamina into play again. Uh, the way she finished that race there would... would would fill you with confidence that she'll get up the hill fine. And look, a lot's been made about the allowance. She won't get as much of an allowance at Cheltenham, but she still get the seven pounds. Um, and and put the kettle on is the most recent mare to make make hay with that in the article. So she was a front runner mare as well. So um, 
Oh, look, I'm hopeful. Look, she well, we got her on side 12 to 1. She's 92 now. You can't argue with that. But I'd be hopeful enough that she can reverse form of Blue Lord. One thing that's been... You're one of many sulky Riviera de Tell fans trying to make a case why she reverses the form. Um, so, Ronan, <laughs> you're not the only one. Uh, for me, the best horse won the race. Um, just looking at the race as a whole, people are saying that, you know, the Irish novices. Um, suddenly, all the talk is about the English novices. Edward Stone, third time lucky, which is they're set to clash this weekend upcoming. Um, but I thought, thought it was a great race. I thought it was. They went absolute breakneck, and you know, Saint Sam, he really impressed me. I, you know, he he was arguably the horse to take out of the race, uh, given the fact that it was the pace he went. Did he go too hard under Rachel Blackmore? His jumping was electric the whole way around. Um, until the skin last when he divided it and ended all chance. Surely you were thinking this, this horse is going to be well left behind. But he stayed on very well. And I think he was only beaten four lengths by Riviera to tell herself. So <clears throat> for me, um, he was certainly, uh, he ran a big race and heard Barry Gerdy on off the fence uh, talking up the, the run of um, St. Sam. And I can see his, his, his case and, and said he could be potential each way value for the Arkel. Uh, but Blue Lord for me wasn't in a tap in front. Um, his jumping wasn't, look, it was a big, in terms of his his chasing career, it was a big step up, um, you know, considering some of the rivals he, he ran against to date. So I thought he was entitled to put in one or two novice years down the back. But the class, I mean, he, he breezed up size coming to the last roll. And, and, you know, why did she jump the fence the way she did? I mean, was she, was she tired? I know she stayed on again at the line, but uh, for, for me, I, I just think he was, he jumped the last and he was looking around the place Um Paul Turner mentioned the wind in the straight. There was lots of different excuses given, uh, but I just don't think he was doing a tap um, in front. So that would be, I think he was idling. Uh, I think Paul he, he probably he probably want to be doing a tap when he hits the front to Cheltenham up the hill, would you say? <laughs> he probably would be, but I'd say there's a lot more to come from him. That's my point. Um, and the same for Riviera to tell. We spoke to Gordon, as I said last week, and he said every time he looks over the every time he looks over the, the stable door, she's she's getting stronger. So I think the Irish novices. Um, hold the aces. Um, you know, I don't think it's as bad a division in Ireland as some are making out. And uh, I thought it was a really good race. I think it was five seconds quicker than the the check and Is that correct? I, I, that's what I saw. That's what uh, I read. Really no, I think it was five seconds quicker than the the handicap uh, on over the same distance on the same day. Uh, the one, the one that was won by Wave of the Sea. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it was by far the best time on the cards. Um, for for Saturday, it was it was a very good time. Yeah, so that's that's what I would say. So look, um, the Irish Arkle, a good race, and Ronan, it looks like we've a showdown at Cheltenham. Uh, what price you've revered to tell? Remind the viewers. Oh, Twelve to one. Oh, nice. Okay, and, and seven to one, Blue Lord. So yeah, it's shaping up for. We're live. Clash. We're live. Okay, Irish Gold Cup. Um, looking at Eddie O'Leary as we speak, being interviewed by Nick Luck after the race. Eddie since come out and said, would the Ryanair suit this horse better? Um, the way he travels, for me, you have to go to the Gold Cup with him. It was a huge step up in class, and I do not think this horse is getting any credit whatsoever. I'm inclined to agree with you, but I just can't get my head around him. Um Look, he was jumped from fence to fence. He picked up beautifully uh, before the straight. It had everything in trouble. And he's quickened away from them like a really good horse. And then you think Nella Indo, who's ran a real big race, you think he's going to come and grab him. I was watching the race and I said to the person beside me, oh, here comes Manella. Uh, I thought he was going to win at one point. And then it conflates. Just hold him. He stayed on strongly, which would, would bode well, obviously, for Cheltenham if you are thinking about the Gold Cup. And maybe he isn't getting the credit he deserves just because of the, he was an 18 to 1 shot. And he's come from, kind of come from uh, left field. He's, he was favoured for the uh, Kerry National way back. And, and he unseated his rider there. But he's got himself together. He was second to Eclat de Rear. And everyone was obviously concentrating on Eclat de Rear then for the uh, Ladbrokes Gold Cup. And then he won a handicap chase at Navin, beating our uh, podcast favourite Golden Jewel. Um, and he's just took a huge step up in class and uh, he's run out really good. I just can't get my head around whether 12 to 1 is 
underrating them or just about right or, or overrating them. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I just don't see how this is a fluke. I get there's a couple in behind. I guess Darien went off favoured, 5-2. Five, five um, Manila Endo, I think, has it, it was a much perfu- improved performance. You look at the horses in behind Janet, I suppose it's Darien, Ken Boy. They've all been around each other. Um, Delta work. So that that form, <clears throat> you know, if you cast your, cast your eyes back to the John Durkin, for example, um, you know, is, is there John Durkin form lines? Has that after, is, is that after holding up in here? Conflate had done everything right. Davy Russell, great ride, obviously. Um, had him handy the whole way. Um, you know, jumped his way to the front tree out. So he was in the first tree the whole way around. And to me, it just looked like he was he was getting a stone off everything else in the race. He's got up to 166. Um, he's by eight. He's an eight-year-old. He's only had 10 runs over fences. Um, all I can say is a big boost to Golden Jewel, Thomas Kyle. <laughs> a big foreign boost. Uh, of course, bet Golden Jewel by five lengths. Giving him plenty of weight at Navin on the previous start and goes and wins the, the Irish Gold Cup run the group. I wouldn't discount him. I think people are very quick to discount this yeah, horse. In, you, in, you, you in, be, uh, you'd be slightly worried that the Ryanair chat, they did that once before with Empire Dirt, uh, who came to back down from the Irish Gold Cup and went for the Ryanair. But I, I would have thought Jiggenstown, they're all about the Gold Cup, even though they obviously uh, closely linked with sponsorship to the Ryanair. Uh, I would have thought the Gold Cup is their mecca as such. So if they had one good enough to run, they would. So... To see what happens. I, I thought it was a big step forward um, for Manila Endo, to be fair. So I know you're a fan of the horse. And uh, I was, you know, I was on Thursday show, I couldn't have it whatsoever. Um, but he's come forward a lot. And you'd have to imagine he's going to improve again going to the Cheltenham Festival. So um, that was probably the one, as you said, to take out of the race apart from the winner. But. Um, for me, I don't see why they wouldn't roll the dice and go for the Gold Cup. Conflated. That's uh, that's that talk. Janadil done his best work at the end. That was just a strange, a strange finish from Janadil. Doubling racing. Sorry, the Labrooks novice chase. Uh, Gallop and the Champs. Two words running. Turners. Or, or brown advisory. That's three words. I keep thinking the R. I say it, but uh, if it was me. I'd, I'd be, I'd be going Turners, um, and I'm not just. I have a bit on them for that race as well. Um, after last year's festival, why? I, he, I just think he jumps. He jumps and he travels really, really strongly over the distance. And yeah, look, he won his three mile grade one over hurdles last season, and he will stay in time, but. For the time being, he's only had his two starts. Why don't you keep him to the t- two five distance and uh, use his jumping and his powerful traveling to uh, to suit him best? Really, um, look, he's uh, he's a winner on the new course as well. Um, if he went for the RSA, it'd be going for the old course. He's a winner over two and a half miles on the new course over hurdles. So, uh, new course. Big, there's, a, there, there's a there's a big difference of opinion. And then I've heard some who are absolutely bullish that he is going to go one way or the other. Uh, for me, lots have been made about you know Willie's comments. I don't think you can read into anything that Willie Mullen said after the race because Willie just isn't going to commit, you know. And I, we're just going to have to wait and, until closer to the time. You're, you're not going to get an answer to this until Dex. And the 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 interesting thing that he did say for me, and this is what I took from it, was that the horse. First of all, Ruby said straight after the race, um, Ruby's comments were that the way he travels, he was very keen through the first mile. Uh, and given how well he jumps, and, and I get it wasn't as a spectacular a jump and performance um, as it was at Christmas. For, for me, you know, I think Ruby said it right when he said, there's no reason to go up and trip with this horse. Don't forget the race is a furlong less um, at Cheltenham. So it is, I think it's two mile four, is it? Is that correct? Two mile four is the Turners. So he is going four, yeah. yeah, up a hill. So um and the hill won't be an issue to this horse. I will be sending him to the Turners. I think if it's the call it at this stage, I think he will. Willie's comments interesting. Paul 
and himself were not in sync. Paul and the horse, the horse wanted to go forward. The horse wanted to attack his fences. Um, and, and Paul was trying to teach him. Basically, so he was keen. He was trying to teach him. Um, and, and that's, you know, was that a reason for, for some of the novice errors? Um, he was trying to teach him. Willie did say, next time we're going to revert to previous tactics. So what does that mean? Does that mean go forward, attack your fences? Oh, I don't think they're going to be afraid of Bob Ollinger, are they? I don't think so. Well, it's such a, it, when he was, was sticking in the race, he thinks he's the best chance of winning. And it's touch and go. If you look at the odds, none run or no bet for both races. It's very so. It, it, I don't think it'll be, they'll be afraid of a certain horse. It'll just be literally best chance of winning. And the odds are a reasonably good guide to that. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, one thing to say is the race did kind of fall apart in behind them to an extent. It would have been lovely if Capadano stayed up. We would have got a good link to Bob Ellinger there. But he obviously departed early and mm. Beacon Edge as well was an undergrade one winner. And I'm not sure how Fur well Fury Road actually ran. Did he run up to his form at Christmas? So um, the race did, did fall apart a little bit. Um, so we'll see how that plays out in time. But yeah it'll be interesting it will be debate now before christmas uh, which race does gallop and go for we obviously want the turners but the festival is obviously live as well the big doyen under pressure and look at it zender clegane and facile vega on the steel <laughs> ronan groom this is not a horse is it yeah, this is a good. freak. But don't be getting too excited about bumper horses. How many times have I told you, Basil? Just uh, chill, chill the beans, chill the beans. No, this, um, I, I actually have no idea what this was. This wasn't a horse. This was unbelievable. And um, he's even money for the champion bumper. And he is going to be in all the acumes. And uh, if I'm doing an acume, and I'm not one for the acumes, I'll be honest. But he's going to be in there. Um I just loved how, you know, Patrick's comments after the race travels very smoothly. And what I love about him is he's not keen. So he's just effortless. He just covers the ground so easily. Um, they went an absolute, they would even put a pacemaker in there. Embassy Gardens made a, went a serious clip in front. It was almost like the Ascot uh, Gold Cup at Leopardstown. It was unbelievable. The, the pace, like, and how he, just breezed up alongside Xander Clegane, who's a really good horse. And the rain came for Xander Clegane, so, you know, you, the conditions suited him. I just thought it was exceptionally breezed up alongside. The commentary was excellent. Um, he didn't have any cover the whole way around, if you watch back. And the way he lintoned in the straight, when Patrick gave him a small bit of rain, he was just gone. And he just absolutely ate the ground up. So I, I'm not exactly, this was unbelievable. This was some performance. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Mm. You think I'm getting too excited? I don't think so. This is this is very, very good. Um, going to rattle through it very quickly. Um, give you the Dublin chase and I'll come in on Honeysuckle and uh, we're going to move on quickly to our selections. Yeah, look, it was good to see Shaq on back. Um, he was back at his best at Leopardstown. He put up a good time. He jumped well. He went away from Don Vegan and Captain Guinness. A reasonable form without being amazing form. Um, and I think absolutely roll the dice, let's go again. And tell them you've got it, he's got it to prove there, but you're getting a bit of compensation for that now. Um, like he's got it to prove there, but so has your favorite horse in Urgermine. Um, I think all the shrewds now are coming out with Czech and Persuad for the champion chase. He won't get, he won't get near the two of them. I, I, you, you know, people are hanging on to every word Willie is saying about, you know, Czech and Persuad, but he's been to Cheltenham, disappointed, put in a couple of stinkers at his best. I don't even think he's, 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 he's as good as these two. So, um, you're speaking ruthlessly now, Basil, for a fella that was all over Shaq and Persuad for the Yeah, no I, no, I just think these two are different gravy. Different gravy, the two of them. So, um, no, couldn't be entertaining that. The horse to take out. Look, he's a, he's a very good horse, obviously. And it was a good performance. Don Vegan is the horse to take out of it. And Buddy Rich Form. Buddy Rich Form for the Grand Annual. That was my takeaway uh, from the race. Don Vegan, a cracking effort. Fair play to Thomas Coyle. Put him up without the fav. Uh, at a big old price on Thursday's show. Um, I thought he ran an absolute cracker uh, for Pat Fay. I wouldn't be surprised if this horse doesn't go to Cheltenham, Don Vegan. Lots of people are mentioning him for the Grand Annual. Can't have that, I'd say. Too high, too go, high. Go, 
Going back right hand and outside Fairy House or Punchestown for uh, Dunn Vegan. There you go. Irish champion hurdle run. I'm going to take the lead on this. I didn't think she was spectacular by any means. And, you know, she wins the race typically typically between three out and two out. Is that correct? Was, is that what? That's when she... She quickened away just as they came in, didn't she? And that, that was kind of the winning of the race there. She never really extended any further than she had to. So she wins it. She, she wins it at that point in the race. And the one lurker, and I'm not just talking with my, my pocket here, but appreciated. Um going on last year's Supreme. I, I think he's a big challenger. I, I get we haven't seen him. We're going to see him in Gorn, probably. And reports yesterday that the horse is is, is very well. And uh, what he didn't want to give him on his first run of the season, throw him in in, in, in a grade one in open company against Honeysuckle, which is understandable to me. Um, I know you're one to say, oh, yeah, I have these big clashes. You're very vocal about that. You know, you shouldn't be avoiding these big clashes. And we were, you know, sewing the boot into Nicky Henderson last year about it. But I think on first, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's completely understandable on his first start in open company. Um I wouldn't uh, have thought that would have been the best option. Appreciated for me is a big danger to her. Um, you know, she's going to go off. She's going to be in all the accumes again, and she's a great horse. The way she jumped the last didn't uh, didn't excite me now. Um, she One thing, just to negate that, she is overcoming a stable form. Henry's horses aren't aren't really, don't seem to be at their, at their brilliant best or whatever. Um, she was his only winner over the weekend. And she did that at Punchstown as well. So uh, I, I wouldn't be too worried if I was a Honeysuckle fan or whatever. I still think she wouldn't try and help. She put in a hairy one down the back. Um, the last wasn't, she wasn't overly fluent. And I look, I'd, I'd be willing to take her on each way. Uh, I appreciate a filthy, dirty each way bit at this point. And uh, now I'm running all bet. Um, Tell ourselves Irish, uh, novice hurdle run. And before we do wrap up, uh, Sir Gerhard. We were speaking off air. You think he may potentially go up and trip? He was very good. I was very good, yeah. No, he was he was very good from the front. The first he did make mistakes early on in the race, as Willie Mullins put it. The first half of the race bad and the second half of the race was good. So um he will have to uh improve in that yard, but that would actually arguably fill you with more <coughs> because um he can learn from that and, and he can be even better next time if he does jump better uh look he's he's he's, he's put up a good time and they've come the front three have come right away from the rest of them uh disappointed with with some of them in behind the likes of statuaire who was a big fan of beforehand and she's she's ran no sort of race she just couldn't lay up with such a hard and and the front runners there as they came into the straight tree stripe life the form is a real solid look because you tree stripe life, which brings you back to Mighty Potter in the grade one at Christmas. And then you have Colonel Mustard, which links you to John Bond. He was only beaten three lengths or two and a half lengths by John Bond uh, over at Ascot in a, in, a, in, a, in a slowly run race. This was a much better run race and Sir Gerhard was, was much better than him. So they're, that's a good tight form line for the Supreme anyway. I do think out of the two and i'm not just saying it i've obviously backed dice our dynamo not in the competition but i'm uh on the side here myself for the supreme i think out of the two of them i like think dice our dynamo is more likely to run the supreme shows more pace for me whereas sir gerhard might just if it came down to it they might just think up to two five give him a bit more time as hurdles out in front like faheen that might just suit him better but very very impressed with him on just a second start over hurdles he's got the chat for him as well He's got to be a big player wherever he goes. Don't disagree. Um, agree with everything you've said there. Colonel Muster, good line into the to the British form or the British novices. And um, yeah, I'd say I'd say the way the way he jumps um, up in trip may suit him better. Dice Art Dynamo um from the front in the Supreme. That's what I would be thinking. If Willie's gonna split them, that's I do agree with you, Mr. Groom. Uh, Stuart's room. I have two things to mention. The um the queues at the bars at Leopardstown, sort that out, lads. It's been well said, but um, sort it out. Don't think they were ready for it whatsoever. Um, and who tried to poison Jerry Hannon and Birchdale? <laughs> Birchdale? The old frog in the throat. <laughs> frog in the throat, I thought he had a heart attack. I thought I was going to get the, the, the call up. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, anything for yourself? Anything to mention before uh, we look, come uh, on? Look, it's been well said by now. We don't want to put the boot into yeah, that yeah, but yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus, was heartbreaking. Just sort it out, right? Just sort it out, lads. And you want to drink uh, and you want to go and watch Tracy. You can't be lining up for, for the... For a drink, when you all you want to do is watch the Irish Gold Cup, not good. Okay, conscious of time, Ronald Groom, and I want to get myself another cup of coffee. Um, tracker horses for the week. I'll start with mine. I have three. I'll just list them. Uh, Liberty Dance in the Mayor's Bumper on Sunday. She was a big eye catcher for me. Uh, Travel lovely through the race. Um, she didn't get the run of it turning in. It was we were kind of tightly bunched. I thought she was traveling like the best horse. She got switched. Uh, she had to be switched by Lisa O'Neill and stayed on well and was 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 that lucky I felt uh, Liberty Dance, who was a second string for um second string for Tim O'Driscoll. So Liberty Dance in the mayor's bumper. I think she's a nice horse by Soldier of Fortune. Um Autumn Evening, big eye catcher. Uh, looked like the winner, didn't he, in the in the two-man handicap. Uh, travel lovely. This horse is improving all the time. Jesse's horses. I don't think are absolutely flying it either. So he, he ran a big race, uh, jumped well. His jumping's after improving an awful lot. Um, goes on any ground. He's a big sort of an imposing uh, five-year-old, you know. So he's a big, he was a, a robust juvenile. Um, I put him up on the show last year for the Boodles. I, I think this horse is going to improve as there's a big two-mile handicap in this horse, whether it's something like the county hurdle at Cheltenham or whether it's, you know, back on home soil um, in the spring. I think autumn evening is progressive. And the big galloper, Charles Burns, no explanation for the improvement at Musselburgh. Um, he's qualified for the pretemps. I'm not sure would he, does he get into the pretemps? He was rated 122. So look, I'm just going to watch that space. Uh, he is priced up at 14 to 1, the big galloper. Uh, but this horse had any amount in hand, any amount, um, and would be a player if he got into something like the pretemps, in my view. Uh, what about you? Uh, just one for me, like drop the anchor um, in the, the two mile handicap hurdle there. Uh, he's a horse I followed um, quite well, backed him to win that race last season and he came through. Uh, he he disappointed on his previous run at Ascot, um, but this was much better. He was he, He's a horse that needs a real strong pace over the two miles to be seen at his best and he probably needs a bit softer ground, but he does eventually get going and in this case he just got going a bit too late. Uh, but he was well behind them coming into straight and then really stayed on to finish fifth uh, there to call me Lyrene. So I think going back to the county hurdle, which he finished seventh in last season, again, Pat Fatty, mm. Fat Fat, yeah, coming, coming off the pace there again and, and a really strong finish closest to them, closest to the leader uh, at the line. So um, I think soft ground would really bring him into it, but he'd be a couple of pounds lower this season and... Um, yeah, I, I think drop the anchor is interesting for a race like that. So, um, thought he thought he was the biggest eye catcher for me at that percent. Anyway, interesting viewers' questions, viewers' comments. Stephen O'Cara said, listening to Barry, he seems like he's really into this tipping competition uh, against Roland. So, uh, well, Stephen, let us know who's the better book. The selections are down, running across the the bottom of the screen. Um. No pata for Shannon said it was a nice steer on Longhouse Poet. It was great to have, of course, Martin Brazel on the podcast on Thursday. Uh, thanks for the comment. Uh, Chris Hooten agrees with me. He thinks Saint Seagal has a lot of promise for him um, and needs maybe needs to sharpen up his jumper, but he thinks he will and could be a player for the Boodles. Uh, thank you for that, Chris. Yautran says, I'll be crying if Gallop and the Champs goes to the Turners and beats the Bob. He said, I've, I've big prices on Bob and Gallop and the Champ for the RSA. In plenty you of might be out. crying, your tramp. <laughs> <laughs> that on top of Fernie being out after being seriously hurt, the fun of anti post. So yeah, not good. Um, yeah, you're in big butter. Yeah, uh, you're trying to gallop and goes that route because don't see how he doesn't beat Bob Allinger. Um, better horse. Okay, Rona Groom. By the way, stay putting your comments in and your questions, um, and we will be. This is a feature on the show every single week. So, Rona Group, just very, very quickly, give us your selections to date and uh, just kind of one or, one or two words in terms of how you're feeling about them at this point. Okay, I'll just reflect over the weekend of, if anything has changed since last talk. So, Ellie May, no real change there. Statuaire, very disappointing. Um, 
close to putting the line through her for the mayor's novice. She has a lot to do. Riviera de Tell, 12 to 1. Uh, nice, nice price, obviously. As I said earlier in the show, I think she can, she's a live hope in the Arkell at the very least. Uh, San Felician, I just thought, uh, or he's been taken out of the champion hurdle this week, which is a positive for me. Uh, I took him at any to win any race, 8 to 1. So maybe they look at a handicap with him now. Galvin, I think, is rock solid. 6 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Run Wild Fred, the same for the National Hunt Chase. Knight Salute. Uh, yeah, look, that was a, it was a selection before the Irish juveniles started really ramping up. Um, he's got it all to do. I think 16 to 1. Put it this way, I wouldn't be picking him now at 16 to 1. Uh, Hillcrest, big fan of this horse. I'm hoping that he, they get him out soon, maybe in the next couple of weeks, so that he can run a Cheltenham. Disaster, obviously, the last day on Seton Rider, but maybe they can find the race from before. Uh, Cheltenham and uh, I'd back them for the Bally more. Uh, Ahoy Senor, give him a quick mention because he did very well over the weekend. I thought he was very professional. Uh, I think he has a big chance. 12 to 1 is a lovely price for the Festival Novices Chase. Tiger Roll starting gradually starting to attract support for the cross country. Eric Bloodex uh, looks now like uh, very disappointing at the weekend. Could be a bit of a dud now at 16 to 1. And uh, that brings me up to date, I believe. Oh, yeah. of course, my, uh, sorry, my captain as well, Alaho. Um, nothing changed there. It looks rock solid. Heaven help us. Didn't like the decision to run in the Irish champion, even though she ran okay. But hopefully they get her back to the mares uh, in one piece. And Darver Star might end up in the stairs hurdle still, but a long shot as well. But that's a long range effort for you. Great. Week one, Mighty Potter, 25 to 1. By the way, can I just say, Roland, a high senior, I think Lucinda Russell did say, they could potentially avoid Cheltenham this year, which is but I, I, I but I do agree. I thought he was very good. I think he'd have a big chance. Mighty Potter week one for myself, 25 to 1. Uh for the Supreme. I was a bit puzzled last week after Pied Piper. Um but given the way what's after working out at the Dublin Racing Festival, I think this is very much alive. We say <laughs> it goes one way or the other with Mighty Potter every week. But Supreme 25 to 1 has to have a big chance if he runs. Um, Magic Days 20 to 1 for the Arkle was week two. Uh, I'm not sure we haven't seen her in quite a while. Could be Henry's only runner in the Arkle uh, if she goes. Um, so wouldn't totally discount her. Uh, Sporting John at uh, 20 to 1 for the stairs. Um, soft ground would have a chance. I'd say they probably will roll the dice. Uh, Capadano 20 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase. I'm not sure. Look, he's not qualified. Came down, wouldn't look well for this bet at the moment. He's he's probably the one I'm least confident about at this point. Goes to the race, has a chance. Tell me something, girl. Uh, six to one for the mares. That's worked out nicely. Uh, she's three to one in places. Um, could be shorter, 11 to four. Uh, tell me something, girl. She's the favorite, and I'd say we should go off favorite. Porticello for the triumph, 14 to one. Um, the Irish, if the betting is anything to go by, our head and shoulders clear. I think this is a nice horse and think it could run a good race in the triumph. Um, should he go? Allegory de Vassi, 10 to 1. Uh, that's a lovely one. You know, it's f 11 to 4, uh, 5 to 2 in a place for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Um, she would, she'd have a great chance. Uh, love her. Blue Lord, 7 to 1 for the Arkle, is now the 3 to 1 favourite. Um, happy with that. Buddy Rich is now 9 to 1 for the Grand Annual, uh, 20 to 1. And I think, yeah, Garden did say he's going straight there. So, I'm really confident about Buddy Rich. I think he's a great profile for it. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, eight to one for the champion hurdle. Um, he's come in for a lot of support in the last day or two, given reports of his well-being. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's a, a, a good price and appreciate it. Saint Seagal, 14 to 1 for the Boodles. Again, has come in for plenty of support. Nine to one and uh, non-runner, no bet at the moment, Saint Seagal. So yeah, has a chance. Uh, and urge mean five to one uh, for the Queen Mother. That's my team captain. Delighted with that. Uh, Flooring Porter, 7-1 to one as my first wildcard selection. Um, he is now 3-1 to one favoured for the stairs hurdle. By default, if you like, but uh, yeah, has a big chance. Uh, Gallop and the Champs, 4-1 to one for the Turners. Um, the debate, where will he go? I think Turners, 4-1, to one, good value, should he show up in the Turners. Uh, Janadil, 50-1 to one for the Gold Cup. Ran a cracker again at the weekend. And, uh, yeah, he's not entered, so that's not going to happen. Jerry Kalam is going for the Albert Bartlett, so that's dead as 25 to 1 as a long ranger. The real whacker, 66 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett, was a long range effort. Roland, you said that's what they're for. A good flyer on, on the real whacker. Uh, I tell you, you're at a big, big race. Um, very green and will come forward um, 
at Cheltenham. So I think he could be a lively, lively outsider. So that's me up to date, Ronan Groom. This week's selection. Go for it. I'm playing two this week. Good man. I'm playing a wild card as well. Go for it. My my my, my normal selection is Manella Crooner. I mentioned him at the top of the show. Thought he ran a big race for the Albert Bartlett. A big trial for the Albert Bartlett. I mean, I think that uh, extra uh, three for or two furlongs there at Cheltenham was suiting well. I think he's a nice profile, a nice improving profile for the race. You're admitting the feet on Bloodox, are you? I am. Okay. Well, cool. if he if he ends up in the race and he's live, great. But uh, that was disappointing at the weekend. Um, okay. I'm not sure there was an excuse for that. But Manella Crooner. Uh, big trial for me, but the huge eye catcher in the race stayed on really well, and I think he's a nice profile now. So, I'm gonna get him inside six to one for the uh Albert Barlet. I'm playing my wild cards, and I've been talked into this since we last spoke. Basil, I want to guess we talked about him being slightly underrated in the market, and it's kind of tipped me over the edge. I'm gonna get Phil Dor on side for the triumph at seven to one. I just don't see how that price doesn't shorten between now and Cheltenham. Um, the the British not juveniles aren't up to much at all. That's been very well commentated on since these, these Irish juveniles took off. Pied Piper's obviously gone over there and won, won dismantled them really. Link that back to Vauban. Vauban obviously links to Phil Dor. I think Phil Dor has every chance of reversing the form of Vauban in a strongly run race, which hopefully a triumph will be. Um, Maybe come, turns into a, a, a small field, which which kind of uh, would contradict the, t- the whole thing. But if it does end up being a small field with these two, three Irish Drew Good Drew and Isles, I think seven to one about Phil Dor. If anything, is a brilliant each way price, but I think it'll shorten anyway. I think he's every chance on a stamina laden track with Cheltenham of getting his head back in front again. So, and just on an experience edge as well, he's he'll have be having his fifth run at Cheltenham, where the likes of Oban and Pipe Piper will be having just their third run. And, Obviously, Vauban showed lots of signs of being experienced at Leopardstown on, on Saturday. So, 7-1 to one wild card. I just can't see how that doesn't show in between now and uh, and the day. So, I'm going to get that on site as well. You just think there's a, a massive overreaction, do you? I don't see massive. I just think 7-1 to one is a big price. I just think mm. he goes off 4-1 to one on the day or you know, something like that. You know, So, just take the, take the value there. That's just probably... my He's probably he's probably the each way value certainly. Um, so yeah, wouldn't wouldn't put you off that, Mister Groom. Um, the race that um, you, you're after putting up Manella, Manella Crooner, um, and this this market's after taking a bit of a a change, um, and taking a bit of shape, bit more of a shape. Uh, Manella Crooner, uh, sorry, I'm going I'm going for a horse in the Albert Bartlett as well, Ronan Groom. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and my dial anti post selection just putting it on the bottom. Uh, Manella Crooner is the five to one favorite. Ginto um, has been flagged up yesterday as uh, so it looks like Gordon holds the aces at the top of the market. Uh, Jerry Kalam then is in there as well. Manella Cocooner, don't think he goes to the race. Journey with me going going to the, the Ballymore. And I come down on the nice guy, just like me, Mr. Groom, the nice guy. And uh, this is Willie Mullins' Albert Bartlett horse, and I think um, he's an interesting profile. A seven-year-old who's only had three runs. Um, not typical of Willie Mullins to switch codes, um, or I suppose run a horse twice in a bumper and then send him over hurdles and then straight into an Albert Bartlett. Uh, but I think this horse is, is, is very talented. Oh, he was very professional on, on jump and debut at Nace, over two miles three. Um, he was ridden... In the he was ridden handy in the front two or three. Ramelis was in the same in, in the race. We commented about him last week as being an eye catcher. But as 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 hurdling debuts go, I thought this was he was very, very good, very professional. He's so non-complicated. Uh traveled nicely, wasn't overly keen. Maybe you know that that would that be a worry, maybe inexperience going to an, an Albert Bartlett. It tends to to throw up um winners who, who have plenty of experience. That could be a, maybe a slight concern. I just think this horse has, has plenty of ability and he's going to step up and trip and that isn't going to be any trouble to him whatsoever. Um, Willie was keen to, to make the switch. As I said, he is a seven-year-old. Um, didn't come from any point-to-point background or anything like that. So he's obviously... Uh, this this horse is, um, has been given a lot of time um, and I, I think he's, he's quality. Um, and I love Nace as a track um, with a view to Cheltenham. <clears throat> Came up, you know, 
wasn't over hard on him, Paul Townend. Two mile three, stepping up and trip. This horse to me represents, <clears throat> he could be a dark horse in my view. <clears throat> and I don't see him going off anything like 14 to one on the day. And so getting him in as my selection at 14 to one, that's the nice guy for the Albert Bartlett. There is, would you believe it, 16 to one available, but as I'm a stickler for the rules, Mr. Groom, we have to go where it is available in two places. So 14 to one, the nice guy. And uh, yeah, that wraps up, I suppose, episode number 12, Ronan. We're getting very, very close. We have four weeks to go, I think, at this stage. Is that correct? Four or five, five weeks, isn't it? Five weeks. I'm losing track of time. <laughs> yeah, it's just so exciting. And you're coming to Cheltenham with us. I will. I will be, yeah. That's an experience waiting to be had. That is an experience. Well, look, come here. It was a pleasure. Uh, we will be back um, next week, as always. And uh, thank you very much for everyone who continues to get involved. As I said, a 403% increase in our subscribers in the last 28 days. So keep going. Keep hitting the red button. Keep subscribing. It shows when you start subscribing, it's going to show it to more people. Um, interact with the videos. That's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, roll on Cheltenham, Mr. Groom. And the nice guy is going to win the Albert Bartlett. See you next week. It's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a romping.